we need to go over some of the things that you'll need to be able to use while you are in pre-calculus for second semester. First and foremost, make sure that whenever we are doing anything as part of our pre-calculus class that you're using your Chromebook and your school email account. Certain links won't be made available to you unless you have your school email account in use. And make sure that everything you submit to me is always school appropriate. There are note packets right down here where it says digital copies of worksheets and handouts. So if you're at home, if we have a distance learning situation and you need a worksheet, a note packet, whatever it may be, it will be in here. For instance, we've got the chapter four yellow learning objectives, but right now the thing you'll need the most is the ability to find this note packet. And whether or not you take notes on normal notebook paper and just follow along by making sure that everything you write down is clearly labeled as section 401 day one, um, and then when we get to an example, you'd write down example one, um, that's perfectly fine. But if you're able to, I would recommend printing out those note packets if you haven't already done so, because those note packets really give you an organized way to see what it is that we have, we have gone over in the class. And like I said, anytime we have a worksheet that you need for class, I'll have that in here. Typically, I'll try to put the date on here with it, but it'll be clearly labeled both in here and campus what it is you should be looking for. Again, don't have to print them out. You can just use them as a guide, like a book, and then show all your work on notebook paper. So that is the first step. Like I said, they really do help to organize your notes. You need to attend the Google Meets and follow along with the lessons and ask and answer questions whenever you possibly can. If you're a distance learner and you can't attend the Google Meet, well then make sure you're able to find the daily learning calendar here in the orange folder. And then when you click on it, and you'll see right now there's not a ton in here because we still have some planning days to get to on February 11th and 12th. But you'll be able to scroll on here. Also, each day when I give you the Schoology update, there will be a link to a Google slide that will also have that pre-calculus daily learning calendar in there. So that along with campus, I, I have everything dated in campus and I update everything every day. So all that you need is right there. Now, if you can't attend the lesson. Down here in the green folder, there are daily lesson videos to watch when you're absent. And these videos that are in here right now are videos that have been used in the past. Those are not the new ones. Each day during lunch, I'm gonna to try to download the lesson that we have had for the day. I'll be recording it as I teach it, first and second hour pre-calculus. And then, like I said, during my lunch, I'll try to get it on YouTube and get it in here. It's best to watch the current videos instead of the older ones that you see right here. But if you don't have any choice, then yes, you can watch those older ones. Again, you need to be in the Google Meets. So with a class like this that's for college and the schools, second semester covers so many new topics and things you've never seen before. You need to be part of the Google Meet so that you can ask questions if you get confused about anything, and you can answer questions to help yourself learn. So those are the daily lesson videos to watch down here in the green. And then after we complete the notes for the day, just in case you're worried that maybe you missed something, each day again, right now this folder is empty because we haven't covered anything, but each day after we've covered the lesson, I will take the notes we've completed and place them in this white folder labeled daily completed lesson notes. And again, give me till around probably noon or so and those pieces will be in there for the day. Now at the end of each of the lessons, that's where we get the assignment. And so again, that's, that's a part of you know watching those older videos, you might be doing more work than you need to. So if you can wait and watch the newer videos, they'll have the updated assignments on there. But know that assignments can be found in multiple places. I have them in campus every single day. So in your parent portal, your student portal, you can find those there. And I also have them here on Schoology 
They are down where you will need to turn them in, which is to start the semester, turn in completed assignments for sections 4.1 through 4.3. And you can see each one of these has a list of what it is that you need to complete, and it has the due date on there. Now, the due dates are subject to change. I'm sure um, even having a different teacher in first semester, that's happened at times. Sometimes we can't get through all the material that we need to. So remember, what you should do is work through the assignment as far as the lesson went. If you feel like, hey, we didn't cover this yet, then you shouldn't go through and do it. And again, that's because our brain is a fabulous little machine, but if we learn something wrong and we put it into our long-term memory incorrect, it can take up to 19 times of seeing it done correctly to fix that in our brain. We don't want that. We want it to go in right the first time. So again, if you're feeling like, I don't think we learned this yet, then just stop because we probably haven't. Now, as you're working on those assignments, you will go ahead and use um, the answers, which again, we have posted, everything's posted this year because of distance learning, worked out solutions to the homework for sections 4.1 to 4.3. So you'll go in here and you'll find whatever it is that you're working on. And yes, sometimes you have to scroll down quite a bit to get to where you need to be. But these are the solutions that I've worked out over the years. And you maybe don't show quite as much detail on your, your homework, but you should. Um, it should have all of your work shown because I can't give you credit unless it does. And make sure that you are labeling everything clearly and you're completing all of the problems. I do not accept assignments that are partially finished. They have to be completed. So they have to be completed and they have to be right. And if you go through the worked out solutions and you find you had something wrong, I have made videos over the years, and we call those the frequently asked questions videos. And these cover the problems that students asked about the most over time. So if you go in, the video will open up. These are the frequently asked questions. And you can go ahead and fast forward to whatever these problems you need. You can fast forward to whatever problems you need. 100 pi over 50. But the most helpful part of this is that I explain how to do the problem. So if you're having difficulty on something, chances are pretty good that somebody else had difficulty in the past, and it's probably in one of these videos. So again, you have to make sure that your answers are correct. And to do that, you want to go into the frequently asked question videos and, and watch those and make sure that you know exactly how to do the problem. So you have to show all of your work and you have to correct your assignment to receive credit. Once that's done, once you know, hey, I have this, then you can go ahead and go back into that turn in folder and you can submit your assignments. Please make sure that your photos are clear. So take clear photos either with your phone or your Chromebook, however you can get that in there. But make sure that I can see all of the problems clearly so that I know that you have completed all of the assignment and I can give you a score. And the score that everybody gets for completed and correct is going to be a two. If you turn the assignment in late, it'll be worth half credit, which is a one. And you have up until the day that the class takes the test to turn in all of that homework. So make sure that you get your homework in before we take the test. Anything that's listed as a missing will be changed to a score of zero when we take the test in class. This is one of those classes where uh, distance learners, you have to keep up with what we're doing each and every day so that you'll be able to be successful, especially in second semester with all of the new material that we're going to be learning about. Deep, deep trigonometry is what we're going to be talking about quite a bit for this semester. Now, when you are going through all these folders, hopefully you'll start getting used to those. Those are the ones that we're really going to use every single day. Um, the first one up here is just the schedule for the normal Google Meet schedule every day while we are in distance learning. Then I have a PDF here of daily steps to take for success, which kind of reviews what I'm talking about in the video as far as here are the steps that we take every day in class. 
Here's the classroom textbook information. Every other year we've been able to tell everybody use this link or this link, this, this copy and paste. And here is the online web code, book code AZE0640. But Flash is used to open up this book and the people that have bought out our book publishers online rights are not willing to pay Flash <laughs> to open up the book anymore. So until they do so, down here we have a link to the pre-calculus book which is just at the district office. They took all the pages out of a pre-calculus book and they copied them off and put it into a PDF. So this is your pre-calculus book right here. If you want to use, I guess, kind of an online version, that's what it is. It is just copies of all the pages of our book. Hopefully they will settle that dispute at some point and we'll be able to go back into the textbook link which right now just tells us due to Adobe's decision to stop supporting Flash, blah, blah, blah. So until somebody gets paid, we're not going to be able to use that one. But you can certainly use the PDF that's in here if you need to. Everybody should have their own textbook for the course anyway. And then syllabus and introductory materials. This is exactly the same policy no matter who you had for first semester, but they're in here if you want to take a look and just kind of refresh your memory as to what they are. And then, like I said earlier, here's that daily learning calendar in that orange folder. That's your go-to, especially if something should happen and you've kind of lost track of where we're at, you've been gone a couple of days, whatever, this is the place to go. Digital copies of worksheets and handouts, that's where note packets and anything you would normally receive as paper from school, it's in here so that you have the opportunity to print it out if you want to, or you could just use it as a guide as you go through. And then digital copies of graph paper. Definitely going to want this bottom one for this semester. And this is special trigonometry graph paper. This is going to be something we're going to use a lot of. So whether or not you, know, you, you print it out right now or you print it out later, that's definitely something that you want to have is um, the trigonometry paper there. And we're starting out with some trig in Chapter 4. Lots of trig in Chapter 4, I should say. All right, so now... We've got daily lesson videos to watch when absent. I already talked to you about those. Daily completed lesson notes that I'll put in there each day after we're done. There are the frequently asked question videos. And these two, you know, in, kind of interchangeable. You could, as you're working through the homework, think, I don't even know how to do this problem. So you could use the purple folder first and complete the problems. Then look at the worked out solutions to the homework or vice versa, where you do the worked out solutions to the homework first, realize that you had one wrong and you can't figure out why it's wrong, then you could go into the frequently asked question videos. Blue folder is where you're going to turn in those assignments, those daily assignments that are due the next day after they're given. And again, in the Google Meets, I'll talk about, you know, what my expectations are, whether or not we've, we've gone through all the material that you need to. And then before we take a test, the distance learners will need to go in here and print out a test security form so that I can make sure that they have somebody monitoring them while they're taking a test. This is not for the students that are normally part of the class. Even when we are, if we are forced to go to a hybrid model again, or you are forced to be at home learning, we will always take our tests as part of a Google Meet. Only the distance learners, because sometimes they have jobs that would hold them up from being able to take the test as part of the Google Meet, um, may use that. But distance learners, you should try and make sure that you are available on test days, no matter what. You cannot fall behind in college in the schools pre-calculus. So this is also where you're going to end up turning in your number and organized work for the test. And typically the next one underneath this would be the test, but we don't have a test in there yet. So you see, I've already got the frequently asked question videos ready to go for the rest of the semester. So this is where you go. The folders are clearly labeled as to what goes where. Each and every day, I'm going to be sending you a Schoology update. I'm going to pull up a copy of one for you. This is 
just an example of the Schoology update that you would receive every day from me. This one particularly was the last day of the semester, was reminding people about the test times to come to the Google Meet using just the Chromebook because the Chromebook allows us to use GoGuardian to monitor you. Now, everything that's in here, things that should be done every day, Please remember to mark yourself present, check your Schoology update, Schoology comments, and that's because every once in a while somebody turns in an assignment that doesn't show enough work, doesn't show the correct steps, and I'll make a comment about it, and then you need to redo it and resubmit it. And then your school email, in case I had to get in touch with you about something specific, pay attention to that daily lesson calendar and make sure that for lessons you have your graphing calculator handy. Although for most of the trig that we're going to do, um, a lot of that is just going to be by hand. We won't be using a graphing calculator. And I'll be giving you a code for the Google Meet each and every day. Use that to sign in with your class. You have to use your Google account through school, isd728.org, in order to get in. Anybody that tries to use any other type of email account, I will not be allowing you into the class. Um, try to make sure that either your background is blurred or you're using your little uh, icon for those and that you're muted. But please, please feel free to unmute when you need to ask and answer questions. I know that's tough with the distance learning Google Meets, but please try to be involved in the lesson every day. And then each will be the fourth place that you can find the homework assignment. I always have it in campus. I have it in the Schoology blue folders. It's at the end of the lesson for any of the lessons that we are covering in class, and it'll be here on the Schoology update every single day. And then you'll see, hey, here's my Google Meet code for first hour, here's my Google Meet code for second hour. And like I said, here is the link to the daily lesson calendar. You can certainly hit that and um, request that I share that with you. And here is another link to the pre-calculus copied book that we have. So Every day, these are the things that I'll send out to let you know what we're doing. Every day, you'll have a new Google Meet call. Start fresh every day and try to get set up so perhaps we can try and have some team or um, pair sharing as we go through the lesson. Back to the syllabus here so that we can take a peek. Just reminding you of the different categories that we have and this is where you find my email address not too hard to find through our school website anyway but the course or overview and objectives and everything that you need for the course reminder that homework is only 20 percent of your grade but we both know that it, it counts for well more than that and the assignments will be collected every day do not wait till the end of the chapter and then try to do all of the homework at one time and submit it. It causes problems for your learning, doesn't work well for math. For math, you need to learn a chunk and then we build on it the next day and then build on it the next day. So you absolutely need to learn to be doing your homework regularly, completely, and efficiently. And that's the key to success in this class. Those homework assignments are, are going to definitely prepare you for the test, which again, the tests count for 80% of your grade. Most of the time when we have quizzes in pre-calculus, they've just been formative quizzes. So they're not something that go into the grade book. And by now you should have learned that the homework, which would be the review homework before the test, is to guide you about the really important topics that you're going to see on the test so that you can study those. And your notes are a big part of that as far as studying. So you wanna keep the notes coming, you wanna keep the homework coming, homework due every day. Now, remember, academic dishonesty. Um, it, it, we've had way too much of this distance learning stuff already, but remember that academic dishonesty is actually something that you could be going through disciplinary procedures through Pine Tech and Community College if you have signed up for their course. And talking about that, I want to make sure that everybody thinks about their grade from first semester because I need to remind you that you have to average a C for both semesters in order to get those five college credits from Pine Tech and Community College. Now, if you were not able to achieve 
C minus or so through first semester, I would definitely say we're at this point where you should be doing the course withdrawal from Pine Tech and Community College. The reason for that is second semester is more difficult than first semester. We cover a lot of trigonometry material that you have never seen before. It's brand new. I would hope that you would agree that most of what we accomplished in first semester was review of really basic algebra topics from Algebra 2, and then we built on them quite a bit. So within the next month, you absolutely need to be making that decision if you had a D or an F from first semester to withdraw from Pine Tech and Community College. If that's the case, you need to contact me because I need to get you a student uh, petition to fill out. And you have to do some documentation, you know, explaining that it was the pandemic and you weren't necessarily working real hard and you didn't do what you should do. Because if you don't do that, you will have a permanent record of uh, academic probation. Academic probation means that even though you may have never set foot on a college campus, you will not be accepted into that school because you had D's or F's in prior college courses. A D at the college level is considered failing. So a C, some colleges do allow C minuses. That's the lowest grade you can get and be termed acceptable. So you want to make sure that that's not part of your permanent record because if you go to apply for a college and you are on academic probation, they are going to say, nope, we won't take you. And then if you really wanted to go, you would contact them again and they'd say, well, we have an appeals process and you have to go through a lot to get accepted into a college. So that course withdrawal for those that are struggling, definitely make that happen. Um, and you might actually consider dropping pre-calculus this year. Um, it might be a good idea for you to slow down a little bit and go into college algebra for second semester. Because remember, at, at this stage in the game, you have to think about your GPA as well and want to make sure that everybody has a chance to be as successful as they can possibly be. And there is a link here to Pine Tech and Community College and all of their policies. Um, make sure that if you're using all of the resources that I have on Schoology and things are, are still difficult for you, that you are contacting me because um, we can do Google Meets at the end of the day. Uh, anything that I can do to help you. Those of you that will be back in the classroom, you can certainly stay after school and get some help. There are all kinds of things you could do. And a reminder of the testing policy and the retesting policy. If you are part of the classroom, you must, must be here on test days. If you're skipping on test days and you skip two or more of those test days, you will be dropped uh, from Pine Technical and Community College. And that is because at Pine Tech, they actually don't allow students to uh, miss on test days. If they miss a test, um, they get one makeup day for being sick. But normally students that are in college, it, we go to school no matter what. You know, I've, I've had classes in college where people were coughing like crazy and they still had to sit there and take their test. The day of the test, the day of the exam is when they have to be there. And if a student were to miss two tests at Pine Tech and Community College, then they would automatically be dropped from the course. So make sure that you're here on test days. And that's why it's important that the distance learners try to be part of the Google Meet as we've gone through it. Now, retests. This is another thing that um, it, Pine Tech actually does not allow any retakes at all. So you've got a little bit of an advantage here. But remember that you have to have all of your homework turned in before the test to even, even be considered for uh, a retake. So all of it has to be turned in before you take the test. And then once you've done that, uh, because we still have some distance learners as part of the course, I will be placing a folder in the file and let me get to one to show you what they looked like in the past. Here we are. So this and I'll just publish it here, it'll take just a second to get that up, is what the retake folder will look like. Retake information for the test of remedial work due by, 
And so you'll notice that the cutoff for the remedial work is the day before the retake is actually due. And all of these are due before the end of the school day, which means on the 13th, you can't start the test at 2.30 and expect that I'm going to allow that. You have to start at least an hour before the deadline. Just to be safe, you might want to start an hour and a half um, in advance. So let's just kind of say one o'clock, you know, on the day of the retake, you want to have all of that taken care of because the end of the school day is 245 it's not midnight so make sure that you get those in and each one of these will have a video and in that video I will be going through the distance learners test and showing you exactly what we were looking for as far as work and answers for those and so you'll click on those And the first page will be all of the things that you need to complete for the retake process. Again, the deadline will be clearly stated and you want to make sure that you get all of those things in by the deadline that you've worked through those slowly and carefully. Um, there really isn't any part here where I sit down and go over things with you and we could do that separately if you would like, but you have to do all of this first. And that's because you have to learn from your mistakes and you have to put some effort into it in order for your brain to start saying, oh gosh, I need to move this into my long-term memory and remember what it was that we did and how those steps were achieved. I think anybody that was in pre-calculus first semester will tell you that it's better to spend extra time on the review and study that really, really well before you take the test the first time. Otherwise, you have to do a lot of remedial work in order to get yourself to the point where you can do that retake and do a good job on it. Um, reminder that most of our retakes, in fact, this year it might be the rest of them, are going to be remote. So our distance learning um, folks can take those as well as the people that are sitting in the class. And that means that the tests are typically a little bit harder to take because it's hard enough sitting in a class with a piece of paper and trying to remember everything that you have to do, but it becomes more difficult when the technology doesn't necessarily play nice with the math that we're doing. Now we're going to take a little bit of time in class and answer any questions anybody has about all of the resources.